11.2b functional groups for this lesson I need, need you to pay attention to tables P, Q, and R as well as the sample problems. Also make sure you read over the alkyl groups which are not listed on tables P, Q, and R. Alright, let's move on. Let's first discuss what functional groups actually are. Functional groups by definition, which are shown on table R, are groups that are attached to a carbon backbone. And these functional groups differ in their structures. As a result of different structures, they have different physical and chemical properties. So just make sure you note about functional groups that different functional groups mean different structures. And because of these different structures and these different functional groups, they have different physical and chemical properties. For example, um, an example of an organic acid would be vinegar, which you know smells very like pungent and very nasty, almost like, you know, rotten eggs almost. Whereas alcohols, you know, an example would be rubbing alcohol. And alcohol smells very strange, very weird, but not nasty like um, acetic acid, which is an organic acid. So the reason why that uh, rubbing alcohol and vinegar have different smells is because they're different function groups. Rubbing alcohol is an alcohol, whereas uh, acetic acid or vinegar is an organic acid. So because of their different functional groups and therefore their different structures, they have different physical and chemical properties such as smell. All right, so that's the idea there. Now, in terms of functional groups, um, these are all listed on table R. So make sure you look at table R to understand these functional groups. The groups are halides, alcohols, ethers, ethers, aldehydes, ketones, organic acids, esters, amines, and amides. Okay? Now, in example one, it says compare the structures of CH3COH and CH3OH and explain what this means for the properties. So CH3COH, if you look, uh, matches up to COH here which is an organic acid, right? Whereas CH3OH, because of the OH at the end, as you see here, matches up to an alcohol. So they have different functional groups specifically. The first one, which is CH3COH, is an organic acid, as you see here, while the other, CH3OH, is an alcohol. As a result of their different functional groups, they have different structures. And as a result of their different uh, structures, that means that uh, their chemical and physical properties will be completely different as a result, as we just learned up here. All right, so make sure you understand that. Different functional groups mean different structures, and di different structures mean different physical and chemical properties. The functional groups are listed on table R, okay? So if you have different functional groups, you have different structures, and therefore, as a result of the different structures, you have different physical and chemical properties, okay? Now let's talk about how to identify different functional groups using table R. So there are two ways or two scenarios in which you can use to identify functional groups. First off, if you have a chemical name, you can use the ending in the name of each example on table R to match it up to a specific organic functional group. So let's see some examples here. For example, in the example of alcohol, one propanol, you'll see that the ending is anole. Therefore, an anole at the end of a chemical name tells you that's an alcohol. If we look at the example for aldehyde, you'll see that the um, example propanol has the ending anal. So anal at the end of a name will tell you you have an aldehyde based on this example. For uh, ketone, you'll see that the example 2-pentanone has the ending unknown. So that unknown at the end of a chemical name will tell you you have a ketone based on this example. For an organic acid, in this example you have propanoic acid. So that ending anoic acid in a chemical name will tell you it's an organic acid based on this example. Okay? Uh, for an ester, you have the example methylpropanoate. And the ending anoate tells you that you have an ester. Alright? So if the chemical name has a no weight at the end, then you'll know you have an ester based on this example right here. Um, for amines, in this example, we have propanamine, where amine is the ending. So if you have amine at the end of a chemical name, you'll know that you have an amine based on this example. And um, for amides, you have the example propanamide. So if you have um, amide at the end, you'll, you'll know that you have an amide based on this example right here. Okay? Other examples include uh, halides. If you look at halides, you'll either have chloro, fluoro, bromo, or iodo in the name. If you have fluoro, chloro, bromo, or iodo in the name, you'll know you have a, a uh, halide. All right, so this example here is chloro in the name, and that chloro part of the name tells you that you've, you have a halide. So if you have chloro, fluoro, bromo, or iodo, iodo in the name, you'll know you have a halide based on this example here. Finally, for ethers, in this example, you have methyl ethyl ether, where the ending is ether. So if, if you have ether at the end of the name, you'll know that you have an ether based on this example right here, methyl ethyl ether, since that's the ending. Okay? So that's the idea. That that's all you got to know. Look at the ending, match it up to one of these examples' endings, and then you'll be able to identify what class of compound and what functional group you have. All right? Next, for, this, for structural and chemical formulas, you just have to circle the non-hydrocarbon functional group. 
So you have to circle the functional group that looks like one of these and then match it up to one of these functional groups to decide which it is. For example, if you add, uh, let's say, I don't know, OH at the end here, right? That would tell you that you have an alcohol. If you add a C double bonded to OH at the end or CHO at the end, that would tell you have an aldehyde, just like this example here. If you add C double bonded to O in the middle or just CO in the middle, you would know you have a ketone, just as it's shown in, in this example. So basically, circle the non-hydrocarbon functional group that looks like one of these and match it up to which class of compound and organic functional group you have. Okay, so that's the idea there. Now, one more thing I want you to note, which is shown at the bottom of um, table R, is that R usually represents a bonded atom or group of atoms. Specifically, the R in the formula, if you ever have it, will typically represent um, C's and H's usually, so, you know, the C and H parts. So make sure you remember that, okay? So that's the idea there. That's how to identify functional groups using chemical names by the endings and structural and chemical formulas based on uh, what functional group you have attached, whichever non-hydrocarbon functional group you have attached, that is. All right, so now I'll try some examples of identifying functional groups based on structural formulas and chemical formulas. So in example two, you have to identify the functional group and the class of organic compound. All the, so as we said in the last slide, use the non, circle the non-hydrocarbon functional group and match it up to one of the functional groups in table R. So the CH part are all the hydrocarbon parts, so ignore those. The non-hydrocarbon part is the OH part. Since OH is a non-hydrocarbon functional group, we match it up if we look, go down this uh, table to this functional group right here. So OH here is a functional group. And if we match it up to the class of organic compounds in the same row, we'll see that it is an alcohol. All right, since it's OH, based on the class of compound in the same row, it is therefore an alcohol. In example three, you can cross out all the hydrocarbon or CH parts. So I get rid of this here and that here. The only part remaining that I circle is the C double bonded to O part. If I match that up to an organic uh, functional group on table R when I go down the row, I'll see that the C double bonded to O matches up to this functional group right here. So that's a functional group. And if I look in the same row, the classic compound in the same row would be a ketone. In example four, I crossed out the hydrocarbon part, which is the CH part, and I circled the non-hydrocarbon part, which is the C double bonded to OH part. So if I look down this uh, table, I'll find that the C double bonded to O and H part is uh, right here. So this is the organic functional group. Therefore, the organic class is, if you look in the same row, an aldehyde. So basically what you have to do is whenever you have examples like these here, cross out the CH parts and circle the part that's the uh, non-hydrocarbon part. Once you identify the functional group that it matches up to, look in the same row to figure out what class of organic compound it is. Okay? Now let's talk about how to identify functional groups based on the chemical name or structural formula. All right, so um, in example five, it says identify the functional group in the class of organic compound. So what you have to do in each of these examples is you have to look at the ending of the name and see which examples, um, which example has the same ending as the one you're looking for. Then in the same row, you can use the same row to identify the functional group and the class. So let's try that with some examples. In two octanol, the ending is anol. The only example that has the same ending, a null, is 1-propanol. All right, and if you look in the same row, the functional group is OH. All right, and if you also look in the same row, therefore, the organic class would be an alcohol. In example six, the ending is, for ethyl hexanoate, is a noate. So the only example with the same ending, a noate, is a uh, methylpropanoate. So if you look in the same row for this as this example, since it has the same ending as ethyl hexanoate, you'll see that the functional group is C double bonded to O and C is also singly bonded to O. Therefore, the organic class, if you look in the same row, would be an ester, okay? In example seven, ethanoic acid has the ending anoic acid. The only uh, example with the same ending anoic acid is propanoic acid. If you look in the same row, you'll find that the functional group is C double bonded to O and C is also bonded to OH like this. And if you also look in the same row, you find that the class of organic compound is inorganic acid. In example 8, butanal has the ending anal, A-N-A-L. And the only example with the same ending anal is uh, propanal here. If you look in the same row, you'll find the functional group, uh, which is C double bond to O, and C is also singly bonded to H, so that's a functional group. If you also look at the same row, you'll find that the class of organic compound would therefore be an aldehyde. Now, uh, these are not listed in table R, but I want you to know these. First of all, we have types of alcohols. So you, first of all, have a primary alcohol, and how you know that something's a primary alcohol 
alcohol is if OH is directly attached to the end of a hydrocarbon chain, either on the left here or on the right here. So an example of a formula, the formula for primary alcohols are OH, where the OH is directly attached at the left or right side of the uh, hydrocarbon, like this. So this is a primary alcohol because OH is at the right side here. It could also be a primary alcohol if, it's, if it was at the left side here. A secondary alcohol, on the other hand, is an OH that's attached to C, and that C it's attached to is also attached to two other Cs. So, so the general formula would be uh, OH bonded to C, and that C is bonded to two other Cs. Okay, so for example, this would be a secondary alcohol because this OH is bonded to a C, and this C that the OH is bonded to is also bonded to two other carbons to the left and right like this. Uh, third and finally, we have tertiary alcohols. Tertiary alcohol alcohols are alcohols where the OH group is attached to C, and that C that the OH is attached to is also attached to three other Cs. So the general formula looks like this. OH bonded to C in the middle, and the C in the middle is bonded to three other Cs as shown by these R's. So an example of a tertiary alcohol would be like this, where the OH is bonded to the C in the middle. And the C is bonded to uh, three other Cs on the left, right, and bottom like this here. Okay? So make sure you review these definitions. Now let's also talk about different types of alcohols that are not listed on table R. So first off, we have monohydroxy alcohols. As suggested by the prefix mono, you, that means that you have one OH uh, group in the alcohol. So for example, this, which is propanol, has one OH at the end, so it's a monohydroxy alcohol. Dihydroxy alcohols, as suggested by the di in front, means that you have two OH groups. So for example, there's an example of an alcohol with two OH groups, because you have one on the right here and one on the left, so it's a dihydroxy alcohol. A trihydroxy alcohol, based on the prefix tri, as you would have guessed, would mean three OH groups. So for example, um, this is an example of a trihydroxy alcohol, because you have three OH groups. You have one on the top here, one in the middle here, and one all the way at the bottom here on the right side. All right, so if you have one OH in the alcohol, it's a monohydroxy. If you have two OH groups, it's a dihydroxy. And if you have three OH groups, it's a trihydroxy alcohol. Now let's go over the alkyl groups. All right, so um, the alkyl groups are basically alkanes minus one hydrogen. For example, methyl, based on the prefix meth, would mean one carbon alkane, which is methane, CH4, minus one hydrogen. So what methyl looks like, since it has one carbon, is a CH3 attached to another carbon like this. So methyl, whenever it's in a compound, will be CH3 attached to another group. Ethyl is, as suggested by the prefix, F2 carbons minus one hydrogen. So it'd be written as CH3, CH2. So ethyl is CH3, CH2 drawn like this, attached to another carbon. Finally, propyl, as suggested by the prefix prop, is a three carbon uh, alkyl group attached to another carbon. So it looks like this. You have CH3, CH2, CH2 like this, and it's attached to another carbon. So basically, the only one you have to memorize is methyl, because methyl is CH3. CH3 attached to another carbon like this. And each time you go up by one, like when you go up to ethyl, you have to add a CH2 here, like this, uh, after the CH3. And if you go up to propyl, you have to add yet another CH2 here, like this, to get propyl. All right, so each time you go up by one from the uh, methyl, you got to add a CH2 to the, to the right side. So for methyl, it's CH3 like this, which you should memorize. Ethyl, you just need to remember that you add CH2 each time. So ethyl, since it has two carbons, is CH3 added with another CH2 like this. For propyl, it's CH3, which you should memorize for methyl, plus two other carbon uh, CH2s, getting you CH3, CH2, CH2 for propyl like this. So make sure you memorize these alkyl groups, okay? Finally, let's talk about how to name functional groups and uh, organic classes. It's really easy. First, count the number of carbons in the middle main chain like this. Like, count the number of carbons here in the middle or here in the middle. Then use table P to find the prefix. For example, if you have five carbons, you'd name it penta. If you have eight carbons, such as this example here, you name it octa and so forth. All right? Step two, after you've found the prefix, then you have to identify the functional group using uh, by circling the non-hydrocarbon functional group. Then you have to use table R to name the ending using the examples. For example, if you look on table R, the ending for um, this OH group here, as you can see here, is a null. So for example, for um, an alcohol, the ending would be a null. Another example would be something like, I don't know, if you have uh, COH, which is an aldehyde, you have the ending anal. So COH here would be like anal for the ending, so on and so forth. All right. So once you've found the prefix from table P as well as the ending from table R, you have to put the prefix and the ending together to get the name. That's all you do. So if you have like five carbons, which is penta, and you have like an OH group at the end, which is a null, you put it together and make pent a null. All right, so that's the idea there.
So now let's go through some examples of naming basic functional groups. Just remember, count the number of carbons first, and then use table P to find the first part of the name, which is the prefix. Then identify the functional groups, then use table R to name the ending from the examples, right? For example, OH is a null. Then you have to put the uh, prefix from step one and the ending from step two together to get the full name. So in example nine here, we have um, this structure here, right? So first, we have to count the number of carbons in the main chain. So if we count, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbons in the main chain. Since we have eight carbons based on table P, we know that the um, prefix is oct. So that's the first part of the name, oct, for the fact that there's eight carbons. Now, in step two, we have to identify the non-hydrocarbon functional group, then name the ending using the examples. So I cross out anything that's a hydrocarbon because I have to focus on the non-hydrocarbon part. So I cross out the C's and H's and I circle this OH part since that's a non-hydrocarbon functional group. Since you have an OH at the end, if you look at the example on table R, the ending for um, the ending for something with an OH functional group is a null, such as in one propanol, right? So the ending must be a null for an alcohol functional group as is shown for the example um, on table R for one propanol. So now I have the beginning oct for eight carbons and um, the ending annul for the fact that I have an OH functional group. If I put the prefix oct and the ending annul together, the full name of this eight carbon alcohol with an OH at the end would be octanol. Oct for the eight carbon part and annul for the OH part. All right, that's all you do. Use the prefix to name the number of carbons and use the ending to name the functional group. Now, for example, 10, um, step one, again, I have to count the number of carbons and use it to find the prefix. If I count, I have one, two carbons. Since I have two carbons based on table P, I know that the prefix must be F. So the first part of the name, which is a prefix for the number of carbons, is F since there's two carbons. For the um, non-hydrocarbon functional group, I cross out anything that's um, a carbon and a hydrogen, and I circle the part that's the non-hydrocarbon functional group. So I cross out the CH3 here, and I circle the C double bond to OH part. The C double bond to OH part at the end, if you look at the uh, reference table, matches up to an aldehyde and aldehyde in this example. For propanol, has the ending anal, A-N-A-L. So I know that the ending is A-N-A-L for an aldehyde functional group, based on what I saw on table R for propanol, right? So the ending is a now for the fact that I have a CHO at the end, and the uh, prefix is F for the fact that I have two carbons. So the full name for a two-carbon aldehyde with the CHO at the end is F now, where the F is two carbons, and the anal is for the CHO part at the end. So basically all you're doing is putting together the prefix for the number of carbons and the ending for the functional group together to get the full name. All right, some more examples here really quick. Uh, example 11. So step one, I have to count the number of carbons and then use that to find the prefix. Now let's name this organic compound. So first we got to count the number of carbons in the structure and use it to find the prefix in table P. So if I count, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine carbons. Since I have nine carbons, I use the prefix known from table P for nine carbons. All right, and step two, I to identify the non-hydrocarbon functional group, then use R to, table R to name the ending using the examples. So basically, I have to cross out the hydrocarbon part because I'm looking for the non-hydrocarbon functional group. So if I cross out all the CHs that are bonded to each other, I just get C double bonded to O in the middle, right? Since I have a C double bonded to O in the middle, um, I can look that up on table R, and C double bonded to O in the middle, is this function group right here. And if I look at the example, I have two pentanone. Notice how the ending here is unknown. So the ending here for the uh, C double bond to O is unknown for this uh, ketone functional group, or C double bond to O right here. So that's the ending that appears on table R. So now what I have to do is I have to put together the prefix for the number of carbons, which is known for nine carbons, along with the ending for this non-hydrocarbon function group, C double bond to O in the middle, which is unknown. So if I put known for the, uh, as a prefix for nine carbons, and the unknown as the ending for the C double bond to own the middle, the full name is known unknown, where the known tells you that you have nine carbons, and the unknown tells you that you have a C double bond to O or a ketone group, functional group in the middle. All right, in example 12, I have to first count the number of carbons to get the prefix or first part of the name. If I count, I have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. So I know the prefix is hex, based on a table P, since hex is for six carbons. So the par first part of the name is hex for six carbons. All right, the second part of the name is uh, the ending based on the non-hydrocarbon function group. So I cross out the hydrocarbon part 
just so I can focus on the non-hydrocarbon functional group. So the non-hydrocarbon functional group is the COOH at the end. So if I look on table R for the COOH at the end, I'll see that um, the COOH at the end matches up to this functional group, which is foreign organic acid. And the ending for an organic acid is this anoic acid at the end. So the ending for C double bond to OOH at the end is anoic acid for an organic acid group, as you just saw in table R for this example, uh, propanoic acid, where the ending is anoic acid. All right, so now what I have to do is I have to put together the prefix for the number of carbons, which is hex for six carbons, along with the ending anoic acid for the COH or organic acid group at the end. And when I put together the prefix and the um, ending, I get hexanoic acid, which tells me that I have six carbons in the main chain. And the anoic acid tells me I have the COOH functional group at the end like this. All right, example 13 is very much the same. Um, I first named the prefix or the number of carbons. So if I count the number of carbons, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So based on the fact that I have six carbons, I know that the prefix is hex based on uh, table P. Since six carbons is hex, the first part of the name is hex to indicate that there's six carbons. The ending of the name must be the ending for the functional group that's the non-hydrocarbon functional group. So I cross out the hydrocarbon part, the C bonded to the H's, and I just focus on this non-hydrocarbon part at the end. So I have CONH2 at the end. So um, what I had to do is I had to focus, so I had to look C, o, C double bond to ONH2 at the end and figure out which functional group that matches up to. If I look, the closest match is C double bond to ONH here, which matches up to the amide group. And based on this example here for propanamide, I know the ending is uh, an amide, right? So um, I put amide for the amide functional group, C double bond to ONH2 as the ending, all right, because this example had an amide for the fact that there's C double bond to ONH2 at the end, okay? So the full name, putting together the fact that we have six uh, hex for six carbons and an amide for the fact that I have um, C double bond to ONH2 at the end, I get hexanamide, where the hex tells me I have six carbons in the main chain, and the anamide tells me I have C double bond to ONH2 at the end right here. Okay, now let's go over the SAM problems. In SAM problem part one, number one, uh, we had to circle the functional group and identify its organic class. So here the non-hydrocarbon functional group is the OH at the end. And this OH, if we look it up on uh, table R, will match up to the organic class alcohol. All right, here the non-hydrocarbon functional group, which is the functional group that's outside the C and H's, is this O part in the middle here in between the C's. The O part in the middle here between the C's is this functional group right here. And the organic class, if you look, would match up to an ether. All right, here um, you have, um, here you have uh, this as a non-hydrocarbon functional group, C double bond to O and an H. So the C double bond to O along with an H matches up this, to this right here. And that organic class, if you look it up right here, matches up to an aldehyde. All right, here the uh, non-hydrocarbon functional group is C double bond to OOH, if you ignore all the hydrocarbon parts. So if C double bond to OOH is this functional group right here. And if you look up its organic class right here, as you see here, it matches up to an organic acid. Here. Um, the non-hydrocarbon function group, that is the function group outside of the C's and H's bonded to each other, is C double bond to OO in the middle. All right, so C double bond to OO in the middle matches up to this function group, and if you look at the organic class right here as it's written, it would match up to an ester. Here, um, you have uh, this compound here, and the non-hydrocarbon function group, meaning the part of the um, organic compound that's not CH, is a C double bond to ONH2 here. So if you look up the function group that ma matches most closely to C double bond to ONH2, it's this one. And if you look up the organic class right here, it matches up most closely to this organic class, which is written as an amide because of the C double bond to ONH2 part. Finally here, you have CHCl3. Uh, so if you look at the non-hydrocarbon function groups here, meaning outside of the C's and H's, the CLs right here, that Cl is right here for chloro, and that matches close, most closely to the compound, classic compound, which is known as a halide because of the Cl or chloro part, okay? So that's the idea there. Basically, circle the non-hydrocarbon functional group, that is the functional group that's not CH. Um, look on table R for its closest match, and then on table R, look in the same row to identify which classic compound is. For example, if you have 
uh, Obana to O O in the middle of C's, then you look in the same row to find that that's an ether. If you have C double bond to OH at the end of the compound, you use this and look in the same row to find out that's an aldehyde and so on and so forth. That's what I did in this example, all right? And number two, um, they have different, these two compounds, CH3, CH2OH, and CH3, CHO have different physical and chemical properties. What is the reason for this? Even though both these have two carbons each, what you'll notice the difference is, is um, the non-hydrocarbon function group here is OH, whereas the non-hydrocarbon function group here is CHO, or C double bond to OH. So um, <clears throat> the reason why they have different physical and chemical properties is that they have different functional groups, meaning different structures. And different functional groups and structures, let's remember, means that you have different physical and chemical properties as a result. Specifically, the different function groups are as follows. The first one, because it has an OH at the end, is an alcohol. And the second structure C, with the COH at the end is an aldehyde, because it has CHO at the end, which matches up to uh, this one right here. Okay, so that's the idea there. If you have different functional groups, you have different uh, structures automatically, and as a result, you have different physical chemical properties as a result. All right, and number 10, uh, identify the functional group and its class. Here you have ol as the ending ol, and that ol, if we look on table R, matches up to one propanol as the closest match. And if you look in the same row, you'll see that the functional group is OH and the class is alcohol. Okay, so it's OH as the functional group and the class is alcohol. For prop anal, the now part, if you look it up, has um, this is the closest match. In fact, that is propanol. And if you look in the same row, this is the functional group, C double bond to OH, and the class of compound, if you look in the same row, is an aldehyde. So that's the answer there, okay? For anoic acid, the anoic acid, you can check this on your own. Um, if you look on table R, matches most closely to this, right? The functional group, if you look in the same row, C double bond to OOH, so that's what you write for the functional group, and the classic compound is an organic acid, okay? Butanoate, if you look at the anoate part, which you check on table R on your own through the examples, you'll find that it matches most closely to um, this example right here. If you look in the same row, this is the uh, functional group, and the classic compound is an ester, obviously. So that's the answer there. Here are the CHOs at the end, and if you look on table R, that matches most closely to um, this one as the functional group at the end. And this functional group at the end matches up to an aldehyde. Here you have OH at the end. If you check on table R, it matches to OH as a function group, and the class is uh, alcohol. This is COH at the end. If you look up COH on table R, you'll find that that matches to COH as a function group, and the class is organic acid if you look in the same row. This compound is O in the middle as a non-hydrocarbon function group. If you look at O in the middle with C's around it, you'll see that this is the functional group. And the in the same row, if you look, the organic class is an ether. So basically, you just use table R, look for um, the functional group or the example with the same ending, and then um, you know use that to match up to the functional group and the um, class in the same row. And number four, all we do is name the prefix first based on the number of carbons on table P. Then we name the ending based on the non-hydrocarbon function group, which we can get from table R. So in 4A, we have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. So based on the fact that we have six carbons, we use a prefix hex based on table P, since hex means six carbons. So the first part of the name is hex to indicate that it's six carbons. Now the non-hydrocarbon function group that is the non-CH part is a C double bond to O in the middle, right? So the C double bond to O in the middle, if we look, matches up to a ketone. And the ending in the example for a ketone is a known. So the ending for this ketone functional group is a known for the ketone functional group on table R. So that's the ending to indicate that you have a C double bond to O in the middle or a ketone. So putting together hex for six carbons and a known for the fact that you have a C double bond to O in the middle, you get hex unknown. For B, if you for step one, count the number of carbons to find the prefix. One, two, three, four, five. If you count, you'll see that you have five carbons. And based on table P, you know the prefix or the first part of the name is pent for five carbons. Then look for the non-hydrocarbon functional group. If you do that, COH is the uh, non-hydrocarbon functional group at the end. If you look up COH as a non-hydrocarbon functional group at the end, you'll see that um, C double bond to OOH matches up to an organic acid, and the example has anoic acid as the ending. So anoic acid would be the ending for this um, organic acid functional group on table R. So putting together pent for five carbons and anoic acid for the C double bond to OOH at the end, I get pent anoic acid for the whole name. All right, 
Please complete these homework questions on your own, including the checkpoint questions, which are popped throughout this video. Thank you very much.